Hello, welcome to our presentation of the Lingo project. My name is Miloš Nikolic, and on behalf of my colleagues Mohamed Al Said and Christoph Koch, I'll talk about our work on incremental processing of complex analytical queries. In case you have any questions or comments about this project, feel free to contact us. Before we start, let's see what we mean by complex analytical queries. The database community has classified big data analytics into two groups based on how much information they can reveal from the data. On one side, we have traditional SQL analytics used in all of systems. We call this simple analytics as they are simple aggregates over multiple dimensions of historical data, mostly used for reporting and decision support. Modern data analysis goes beyond simple SQL towards using more sophisticated algorithms and models from machine learning, data mining, or scientific computing. We classify these operations as complex analytics as they allow us to discover previously unknown aspects of the data, for instance, to detect patterns, anomalies, future trends, and so on. In this talk, we are focusing on such complex analytics, not SQL queries. Many complex analytics can be naturally expressed by iterative linear algebra programs that process multidimensional array data. To illustrate this, we show a simple example of the ordinary least square method, which is a classical method for fitting a curve to data. For this problem, the input is modeled as two-dimensional arrays or matrices, and the result, representing curve parameters, is obtained after evaluating a sequence of matrix operations, like matrix multiplication, inversion, and transpose. Nowadays, such analytics are facing increasingly higher processing costs, as they have to deal with larger and larger amounts of data. Also, most datasets are dynamic in nature and evolve through changes that are small in size compared to the overall dataset size. On the other hand, in many application domains, users want to have frequently fresh views of the data despite its dynamic nature, so that they are able to, process, to promptly react to certain conditions. Obviously, recomputing data analytics on every small dataset change is far from being efficient. Instead, we argue for incremental data analysis. In data management, the notion of incremental processing has been around for many decades. In short, the story goes as follows. We are given a database, and the store materializes the representation of some computation. When the database changes, we don't want to recompute everything from scratch, because that might be costly, especially if updates are frequent and small in size compared to the overall dataset size. Instead, we want to derive a so-called delta computation, which is simpler and presumably cheaper to compute, and it expresses what has to be changed in the result given the current state of the database and an update. The idea of delta computation has been successfully applied in major database systems in the form of incremental view maintenance. For a given SQL query or view defined over a set of base relations, this system derives a set of delta queries so that whenever one of these base relations changes, one delta query is evaluated in order to update the result. We have built a system called LinView that implements incremental view maintenance of analytical queries written as iterative linear algebra programs. It's a compilation framework that transforms APL style programs written in MATLAB, Octave, or R into efficient incremental programs optimized for the execution over dynamic datasets. The language used to form input programs consists of the standard matrix operations, like matrix addition, subtraction, multiplication, inverse and transpose, and as such serves as a basis for expressing many machine learning and data mining algorithms. LinView exploits the ideas of incremental processing and program synthesis to generate efficient incremental programs for different runtime engines. The current prototype supports generation of Octave programs that are specialized for the execution in multiprocessor environments, as well as Spark programs that are meant for the execution on large-scale large cluster platforms. In this talk, we'll focus on the incremental maintenance part of, the, of our framework and explain the main techniques that we used for, to build efficient incremental programs. Let's see what incremental processing means in the context of linear algebra. As an example, we compute the fourth power of a given matrix A using two statements that involve matrix multiplications. For simplicity, we'll assume a naive and complexity of matrix multiplication. 
We capture changes in the input using delta matrices. Here, delta A expresses a single enter change of A, which is the smallest possible change that we can make. Once we update A to a new value, we could re recompute the result using n cube operations, which we deem too expensive. Instead, we would like to derive an incremental program that computes a delta for each sa statement and use this delta to update the result in a less expensive way. The LinView approach is beneficial for programs that execute over dynamic datasets and involve expensive n cube operations like matrix multiplication and matrix inversion. LinView compiles such programs into functionally equivalent ones that exploit the simplicity of incoming updates to achieve efficient incremental evaluation. To reach this goal, we have to address several open questions. First, what do we mean by simple updates? Then, how do we derive a delta for a given expression? Or how do we evaluate, represent and propagate such delta expressions among program statements? To derive deltas, we exploit the basic properties of matrix operations. For instance, to derive a delta for the expression b equals a times a and updates to a, we exploit the distributivity of matrix multiplication over addition to get delta b written as a sum of three terms. Similarly, we can derive delta rules for other matrix operations, except for matrix inversion, for which we use the Sherman Morrison formula to incrementally maintain the the inverse of an invertible matrix. The next question is how to evaluate delta expressions. Again, we consider our matrix powers computation and the single entry change to A. Then we evaluate the delta expression for B. Here, blue entries denote potential non-zero elements in delta matrices. We can see that delta B has non-zero elements in one row and one column. Next, we propagate delta B to the subsequent statement that computes delta C. And eventually, delta C might contain all non-zero elements. We call this the avalanche effect. Even a single entry change in the input can quickly, in just two steps, escalate and contaminate the whole output, implying that n square is the lower bound for updating the result. But what if you want to propagate delta C to subsequent statements? Then, to compute these new deltas, we would have to involve n cube matrix multiplications, because we cannot exploit the, sparse, the sparsity of delta matrices anymore. But that's already the complexity of reevaluation. So, we can say that because of the avalanche effect, IVM can lose its performance benefit over reevaluation. Now, the question is, how to deal with this problem. We have just seen that representing one delta as a single matrix brings practically no benefit to, a, to IBM because delta computation might involve expensive n-cube operations. But we notice that the previous delta matrices, although they might have many non-zero elements, are essentially low rank matrices. This insight allows us to represent deltas in a factored form as products of two smaller matrices. For instance, we could represent the single entry change of A from the previous example as an outer product of two vectors. We argue that this factor representation actually admits efficient incremental evaluation. Let's revisit our example. We represent delta A in the factor form as an outer product of two vectors. This is a so-called rank 1 update, which allows us to express changes of one row or column, or even changes in the whole matrix when multiples of the same vector are added to each row or column. When we evaluate delta B, rather than computing the, the product between those two vectors and multiplying it with A, we can exploit the associativity of matrix multiplication to perform cheaper operations first, in this case, matrix vector multiplications. By doing so, we can keep delta B also in the factored form, this time represented as a sum of two vector products. We needed to update B, we can evaluate this delta, but if we want to propagate delta B to subsequent statements, we always use the factor representation. As a result, we can express delta C as a sum of four outer products. The takeaway from here is that 
Representing deltas as sums of vector products allows us to completely avoid expensive n-cube operations in incremental processing. Instead, we only do matrix vector multiplications. Furthermore, this approach is not limited to rank 1 updates only. We can apply the same ideas to rank S updates, which are capable of expressing more complicated update pat patterns. Of course, we can expect some benefits from IBM as long as S is much smaller than the matrix size. The previous example also shows that deltas might become more and more complex as we propagate them through iterations. However, many practical problems that deal with large matrices converge within only a few iterations, and certainly in much less iterations than, the than what the matrix size is, so, so we can claim that such deltas still retain low complexity. In our paper, we studied general forms of iterative computations. A typical iterative program transforms the initial state into a sequence of states in the process governed by an iterative function. When one of the input changes, instead of re-evaluating new states, we perform incremental evaluation using three steps. First, we materialize all intermediate states. Then, we evaluate delta functions by taking into account that both the input and the results of previous iterations might have changed. And finally, we apply the delta results to create new states. Just to give you a glimpse of our theoretical result, this table shows the time complexity in big O notation of re-evaluation and IVM for rank 1 updates and different analytical tasks. We can see that IVM achieves asymptotically better behavior in almost all cases, usually lowering the n-cube complexity to the n-square complexity, which is the lower bound for the computing the result, as seen before. The only case when IVM performs no better than re-evaluation is when the input problem do not involve n-cube matrix operations. For iterative programs, IVM achieves lower complexity at the expense of increased memory consumption, as it needs to materialize intermediate states. However, using different iterative models, we have managed to bound the memory of overhead to only log k times the overhead of re-evaluation, where k is the number of iterations, and we have al already argued that k is small number in practice, especially much smaller than the matrix size. To validate our theoretical result, we compare the performance of re-evaluation and IBM for a set of analytics using two different runtime engines. First, on a Spark cluster with 100 workers, and then on a multiprocessor running Octave. In both cases, we randomly generate dense input matrices and consider a stream of rank 1 updates. After each update, we maintain the views fresh. This graph compares the performance of re-evaluation and IVM when compute the 16th power of a given matrix A using Spark where the, the size of the input matrix is fixed to 30,000. The y-axis shows the average time per view refresh in seconds, and the x-axis shows the number of Spark workers used in, in the cluster configuration. As expected, adding more Spark workers decreases the cost of re-evaluation. Incremental evaluation is less susceptible to the number of workers because the processing time is mostly dominated by the communication overhead. In other words, the problem size is too small for IBM to scale. Nevertheless, IBM outperforms re-evaluation by more than one order of magnitude in each of these configurations. Next, we compare both evaluation strategies for the same matrix-powered computation, but this time we fix the number of Spark workers to 100, and we vary the size of the input matrix A. For re-evaluation, we show the results for matrices up to 50k in size, because beyond this limit, the running time exceeds one hour. On the other hand, IVM is able to deal with much larger matrices, up to 100k in size, and containing 10 billion entries. The theory says that IVM has a symptotically better behavior than re-evaluation. In practice, IVM clearly dominates over re-evaluation, and the performance gap between those two strategies increases with higher dimensionality. We achieve similar results when running Octave programs on a multiprocessor. This graph shows the performance of the ordinary lead square method 
when evaluated using both strategies and for updates to x. In this experiment, we vary the size of x while the size of y is fixed. Note that re-evaluation has to perform a full matrix inversion, which is an n-cube operation. From this graph, we can draw the same conclusion about the dominance of IBM over re-evaluation, but this time in a multiprocessor environment. Again, the performance gap increases with the problem dimension. To sum up, LeanView implements incremental view maintenance of analytical queries written as iterative linear algebra programs. The main idea of our work is to repre represent deltas in a factored form as sums of other products, and as such propagate through subsequent iterations. The factored representation creates additional opportunities for evaluation of delta expressions, allowing us to mitigate the avalanche problem. In theory, LeanView has a synthetically better behavior than re-evaluation for problems involving expensive n-cube operations, like matrix multiplication and matrix inversion. In practice, our experiments with Spark and Octave show that LeanView can outperform re-evaluations by orders of magnitude. With that, I would like to conclude this short presentation. In case you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Thank you.